Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture is determinants and what happens to the determinant of a matrix when you do an elementary row operation. So that's our basic question. We have an N by N matrix. What happens to the determinant of A if we do an elementary row operation? So now here are the answers. If you switch the two rows, two of the rows of the matrix, then the determinant gets multiplied by minus one. If you multiply a row by a scalar alpha, then the determinant gets multiplied uh, by alpha. And if you add multiple of one row to another, the third elementary row operation, the determinant actually does not change. Same results are also true for columns. We also will note that a lower upper triangular matrix, a matrix whose um, uh, entries above the diagonal or below the diagonal are all zeros, the determinant of such a matrix is the product of the diagonal entries. And if a matrix has a row of zeros, the determinant of A is zero. These combined together will allow us to calculate determinants. You can do elementary row operations until you get to matrix in a triangular form and then find uh, the determinant. So let's look at an example. So here's a four by four matrix and I wanna find its determinant using the results that I've just mentioned. I will talk about their proofs and after that. So determinant of A, first of all, I'm gonna switch um, the, the, first, the first and the second row so as to get a four on top of there so that I can have a leading one. And then having done that switch, the determinant got multiplied by minus one. Then I, I use this four and I turn everything else to zero in that column. And I do that by multiplying that row by something and adding it to the other columns. So for example, um, I how do I make uh, this four in the third row, first column zero? I, mo I add minus the first row to that. And if you do that, minus four plus four is zero minus minus two is two plus five is seven, minus three minus one is minus four, and minus minus one, that's one plus two is three, and you get zero, seven minus four is three. And you also multiply it by a minus a half and add it to the last row, and that way you get a zero here. And if you if I haven't done the arithmetic incorrectly, which I may have, um, you will get something like this. The next thing you do is you take that seven and use that to make everything else in its column below it, zero. When we are finding determinants, we don't need to go to the reduced row echelon form. All we need to do is to get a triangular matrix. And so if you do that, if you look at seven, it's actually pretty easy to get these sevens into zero. You, you just add negative of the second row to the third and the fourth column, and you will get this matrix. Then you will use this one here in the third row, third column to make that one half zero. And in any of these operations, because I'm always using that third um, elementary row operation, I'm multiplying, I'm adding a multiple of one row to another row, uh, the determinant doesn't change. The only time the determinant changed was that first step when I switched the two rows um, in, in this case. And now I have an uh, upper triangular matrix, a matrix that below the diagonal, everything is zero. And so its determinant is the product of those. And I have that minus sign in front. So the determinant of this matrix is minus 56. So uh, keeping track of elementary row operations and what you do is not that hard, especially because that third elementary row operation, which is the one you really need to use often to turn the matrix into an upper triangular matrix, uh, doesn't change the determinant at all. Okay. Now, why are these things true? So before we, I, I have to tell you that using the definition of the determinant. And I have chosen to tell you the def to give a definition of determinant based on elementary products and signed elementary products. I have two other videos that give properties of determinants based on that definition and an earlier video that goes through that definition pretty carefully. So you might wanna watch those, but I'm gonna tell you all you need here. So what's the definition of determinant? An N by N matrix walks through the door, you find all its signed elementary products. And I'll tell you in a second what that means. And you add them together. These are numbers, you add them together and you get a number and that's the determinant of A denoted by DIT A, determinant of A, D-E-T parentheses A. Now, what is an elementary product? An elementary product is a product of N of the entries of the matrix. The matrix is N by N. You pick one entry from each row and one entry from each uh, column. No two entries come from the same row no two entries come from the same um, column and you find their products. But, and then what you do is you have to find the signed elementary products. That means that you, you have to assign either plus or minus to those elementary products that you found. And how do you do that? 
you do that by for each uh, row you record the column number so you start from the top row first row which column did i choose which entry did i pick from there maybe entry from column three so you write down the three second row which column did i use maybe column seven you write seven and you keep doing that and when you do are done you will get a permutation of one true n and that permutation is either odd or even what does that mean that means that what's the number of inversions inversion is when a bigger integer in the permutation appears before a smaller one and you count those if those number of inver inversions is odd then you call the permutation odd and in that case you multiply the elementary product by minus one if the number of inversions the number of times a bigger number occurs before a smaller number is even the permutation is even and you leave the elementary product as is you then add up all these signed elementary products and you get the determinant so so one more time, what do you do? You start with your matrix, you find elementary products. That means you find N entries, no two from each, the same column, no two from each row and multiply them. Um, you also record uh, the column number of these entries as you're coming down the matrix and you get a permutation. You count the number of inversions and if they're odd number of inversions, then you multiply the elementary product by minus one. And that gives you a signed elementary product and then you add them all up and you get the determinant. Okay, now some of these properties of determinants that we need for elementary row operations, I actually have done in a previous video, but I will quickly remind you. So if you have a whole bunch of row vectors, S, R1 to Rn are not at numbers, they're row vectors with N entries. These are row vectors. And alpha is a scalar, then one theorem is that the determinant is linear with respect to the row and column. I'm, 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 I'm explaining it here in terms of rows. That means that if you have two matrices um, that are basically the same, they have the same rows, except in one row they're different, just one row. Well, if you find the determinant of one of them, determinant of the other one, and add them, you get the determinant of the matrix that you get. If you keep everything the same, except that weird row, the one where they were different, you just add the rows together. Um, and, and this is a linear property. Why is this true? I went through some more detail in a previous video, but basically because if you look at the signed elementary products, they're the same. Because when you find the elementary products of this one, you always will have one entry from that row where you added those two rows. That's the sum of two things. When you multiply that out, you get two elementary products, one from this, one from that. Again, watch my other video if you want to see more details. Um, another theorem is that if you, another part of linearity is that if you multiply a row by alpha, then the determinant gets multiplied by alpha. And that's pretty easy to see because the elementary products all will have something from that row. And so all of them will have an alpha, which you can factor out. Okay, so, and this second one actually is one of the, uh, elementary row operations. And so we already know what happens um, in that case. And these, all of these things works for columns as well, if you ever need to use them. Um, so a determinant is an alternating function of rows. What that means is that if you change, switch the place of two rows, the determinant gets multiplied by minus sign. Now this took actually a little bit of a proof to do in a previous, uh, in, a, in a previous video. And the proof is, is that again, the elementary products will actually be exactly the same. It's just that every one of them will have a different sign. And the reason for that is that the permutation that you originally had for an elementary product, now in, for, for this new one, when you switch the rows, the place of two of the columns switched. And in, a, and, and in a permutation, if you switch the place of two of them, if the permutation was odd, it becomes even. If it's even, it becomes odd. And, and a corollary of this, again, de more details of that in the previous video on properties of determinants. Now, um, the corollary of that is that if two rows of a square matrix are the same, then the determinant is zero. That's easy to see from this. If, two, if you have a matrix that has two rows the same, switch the rows. And I just told you that the determinant gets multiplied by minus one. But if you switch two rows that are the same, the matrix actually doesn't change. So it's the determinant is going to be the same. So it's the same and gets multiplied by minus, by minus one at the same time. And there's only number that's equal to its negative, and that's zero. Okay. One final thing um, that, that will help us in terms of calculating uh, determinants when, uh, when, when we use row operations is to notice that if you have a upper triangular matrix or a lower triangular matrix, then the only uh, elementary product is the product of, product of diagonal entries. 
and that's an even permutation because actually there's no inversions. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, n, and and so the determinant of a upper triangle or over triangle matrix is always just the product of uh, diagonal entries. And also, if A has a row of zeros, because when you're doing row operations, you might end up with a row of zeros, then um, the determinant is zero because all elementary products you need to take something from that uh, from that row of zeros, and uh, and you will get zeros. These are all things that we have. Uh, talked about um, in previous videos. The only thing among, about uh, elementary row operations that we haven't shown before is that if you add the mo a multiple of one row to another, the determinant doesn't change. And that's really the purpose of this video. Um, that's the one elementary row operation that we actually use a lot when we are we are trying to simplify a matrix and, and that doesn't change the determinant. Why is that? So let's see. So we want to show that if you add a scalar multiple of one row to another, the determinant does not change. So I've got these rows, again, R1 through Rn are row vectors, they're N tuples, and I have a matrix that those are its rows. And I have a scalar, and um, I have a matrix A, whose rows are R1 through Rn, and the matrix B is the same as A, except I did one thing. I changed a J throw. How did I change the J throw? I added alpha times the I throw to it, and I want to show the determinant of these are the same. And here's the proof. Well, I want to find the determinant of this new matrix. Now, because of the linearity properties that we proved in detail in the previous video, and I told you a, a little bit about why they're true, I can split this up because a J throw is the sum of two rows. And so I that determinant is the sum of these two determinants. And this alpha can come out also, also because this is um, one of the elementary operations. If you multiply a, a row of a matrix by alpha, then that alpha comes out. And so we have this. Now, what about the second matrix here, determinant of R1 through Rn? Well, that's just A. So that's just determinant of A. But what about this guy? This guy alpha comes out. Uh, this other matrix has two rows that are the same. The i row and the j row both are Ri. And so the determinant of that is zero. So we have alpha times zero plus determinant of A. And so we get determinant of A. So this was this was B, and so determinant of B is the same as determinant of A. So I'm done. So let me show, give you one more example. So here's a, here's a matrix. So I want to find its determinant. What I might do is that I might switch the first and the second row, and that introduces a negative sign, because when you do that, the determinant gets multiplied by minus one. I factor that three out. I get three times the determinant, this other determinant. Now I do my third elementary row operation that doesn't change. Um, um, the determinant, I use this one, this leading one, this pivot to change that two into a zero and, and I will get this. And then I uh, no, get, go on to this other one and change, use that to change this 10 into zero and that does not change the uh, determinant and I get this and now I have an upper triangular matrix and I know that its determinant is the product of the diagonals. One times one times minus five, 55 but I have also a, a minus three up front and so I get the determinant, assuming that I haven't done an arithmetic mistake, which I may have. So the recap is that so far in this series of videos on determinants, we have shown that if you have an n by n matrix, if you have a lower or upper triangular matrix, the determinant is the product of diagonal entries. If a matrix has a row of zero, it's determinant zero. If you switch two rows, the determinant gets multiplied by minus one. And, and this is called an uh, uh, the alternating function of the rows. Uh, when that happens. If you multiply a row by alpha, the determinant gets multiplied by that alpha. If you add a multiple of one row to another, the determinant doesn't change. And um, one way to organize some of these is to say that determinant is a multi-linear function of the rows. If you keep all the rows but one fixed, the determinant is a linear function of that. It preserves addition and scalar multiplication. We say multi-linear because that's true about every row. If you pick any one of the rows and keep everything else fixed, then the determinant is a function of, is a linear function of that row. So it's a linear function of the first row, the second row, third row, it's multilinear. Um, so we had a video on the definition of determinant, one on basic properties of determinant, the multilinearity and alternating, alternating definite definition. This was the relationship between determinants, elementary row operations. In the next one, we will be showing A is invertible if and only if determinant of A is non-zero, and the determinant of AB is determinant of A times determinant of B. There's another one on cofactor expansions about adjoints, about Ronskin, and the relationship between determinants and area and volumes.
this is the end of this um, video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to be subjected to more undergraduate math videos on your feed. And like my video if you like it. And at all times, keep hydrated. See you next time.